Um, <clears throat> good morning, uh, good evening, good afternoon uh, to everyone. Uh, recently, uh, about a month ago, we discussed the potential role of PrEP in extending and diversifying prevention efforts with adolescents in the Americas. So in, uh, in this webinar, uh, uh, today, Monday, the 29th of October, uh, Dr. Inés Dourado, who is the principal investigator of the only PrEP demonstration study focused on adolescents in our region, which is also supported by UNITAID, will describe the design and progress to date of this very important study. Uh, she will also answer questions from the public, and her presentation is entitled The Demonstration Project, The Effectiveness of PrEP Amongst Adolescents, MSM, and Transgender Women at High Risk for HIV in Three Brazilian Cities, Salvador, San Paulo, and Belo Horizonte. You remember uh, that uh, Alejandra Procero from uh, UNICEF presented about a month ago on uh, issues around the potential inclusion of PrEP as part of community HIV prevention for uh, young people, for adolescents, uh, particularly adolescents uh, who are part of uh, key populations. Uh, and uh, definitely there's uh, important evidence uh, from clinical trials that it uh, was going to work. And uh, in the same way as we are, I mean, we are part, you know, Brazil, Mexico, and Peru, we are part of the IMPREP study, which is a study on uh, adult uh, MSM and transgender women uh, from the three countries in public services. This is another very important study that uh, Ines and, and collaborators are conducting in Brazil only, and uh, it's three important cities uh, of that country uh, uh, where they are actually uh, trying to, to assess how PrEP can work for young people, for, for uh, adolescents, and uh, what the challenges are, because the, the purpose of the, uh, all of these studies, demonstration studies, is actually to, to see how evidence from clinical trials can translate into implementation, adaptation to uh, public services, to regular uh, prevention activities in each of the of the countries. So that's the purpose of all demonstration studies, including this one. But let me just uh, be, uh, tell you a little bit about Ines. Uh, Ines is she's a food professor and a researcher at the Institute of Collective Health uh, in um, the Federal University of Bahia, uh, Northeast Brazil. Um, her institute is a leading academic institution in graduate and undergraduate programs in public health. She's a physician with a master's in public health from the University of Massachusetts and a PhD in epidemiology from the School of Public Health of the University of California, Los Angeles. Uh, Dr. Durado teaches epidemiology um, uh, in, uh, to undergraduates as well as uh, graduate level courses in epidemiological methods at her institution. She basically uh, does research on epidemiology of infectious diseases and uh, focuses on HIV AIDS. She has been extensively involved in the study of uh, HTLV and HIV uh, and uh, efforts in prevention and epidemiology uh, about those uh, vectors in Brazil. Her current uh, research interests include late access to care among people living with HIV in the general population and among key populations, a behavioral and biological survey among transgender women in Salvador, and uh, PrEP demonstration projects among young MSM and transgender women. So she, um, at, at present, uh, she is the protocol chair uh, and the Salvador PI for the PrEP uh, study. It's um, a demonstration project of the effectiveness of PrEP amongst adolescent MSM and transgender women at high risk for HIV infection in three Brazilian cities, Salvador, Sao Paulo, and Belo Horizonte. So uh, it's our pleasure to, to welcome you, Ines, here. So please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Carlos, uh, for the opportunity. Um, good morning to all, good afternoon, good evening, 
and once again, thank you, Carlos and Nemos, uh, for the opportunity to present um, this protocol. As Carlos said, I am um, the chair, the protocol chair, uh, which means that I am um, the liaison between my colleagues and UNITAID, because UNITAID is uh, the main supporter of the project, but as well uh, the Brazilian Minister of Health. Uh, we work very close uh, to the Minister of Health, to the National HIV AIDS Program, and also we work very close uh, with the INPREP uh, project that uh, most of you already heard about um, in Peru um, is part of it, Mexico is part of it, and Brazil as well. And Carlos is uh, the PI for Peru. So we are very much uh, connected to the INPREP study. Uh, this is the title of our study. This, this is, I would say, the formal title um, at UNITAID. And here you see also the PIs for Belo Horizonte, my colleague Giselle Greco, and the PI for Sao Paulo, uh, my colleague uh, Alexandre Grangeiro. So I would like to acknowledge partners and support for this study. Um, and you see here on the screen, there's uh, many logos, uh, regarding the different um, institutions and our own research group. And you see here the logo of Field Cruz, where in PrEP and PrEP Adolescent Study is housed and then the UNITE um, logo. And very soon I can put back again the, um, the logo of the Minister of Health. And here are uh, the three sites. Brazil, it's a very um, large country. I'm based in the Northeast region. Uh, the region is composed by nine states and I'm in capital of uh, the state of Bahia, Salvador. Here is Alexandre Granjero, our colleague from Sao Paulo and Giselle Greco from Belo Horizonte, two capital cities in the Southeast region of Brazil. Our main goals are to evaluate the effectiveness of PrEP use among adolescent men as men and transgender women aged 15 to 19 years old for, um, I would say now for a two year period, because um, as you see, uh, the cohort uh, will start in 2019 um, in, in the three Brazilian cities, Salvador, Belo Horizonte, and Sao Paulo and to help reduce the incidence of HIV among um, our uh, population group for whom PrEP is recommended in Brazil. And I would like to give you a background of the HIV prevalence and the importance of uh, conducting this study among men as men and transgender women, because as you can see, the prevalence of HIV, it's very high in these two population. When we compare to data, uh, to surveillance data, this is um, actually some mathematical modeling for the general population that is being conducted in Brazil for uh, uh, some years now. And the prevalence of HIV, it's below uh, 1% and it's 0.4% among women of the general population, 0.8%. Uh, of men of the general population. And if you see the recent data, which is based on RGS study that was conducted in 2016, um, the prevalence is 18.4% and is close to, um, you know, much higher than 10% of those of, when we conducted the RGS study among those of 18 and older in 2009. So between 2009 and 2016, there was quite a, 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 an increase among men as men. The recent study for transgender women uh, the mass that also was conducted in 2016 called DIVAS show also a very high prevalence, higher than men as men as we uh, would expect. And among those of the RDS study, the recent RDS study of 2016, 
of 18 to 24 years old in 9.4 percent. And another um, rationale uh, for conducting this study among this population group below 19 years old is that data from UNAIDS um, of July to 15, there's probably more recent data now, is that this line here of those 8, 15 to 19 is increasing in the latest year of the um, historical series. Um, so you see that it's going down for children um, until 14 years of age, with the prevention of vertical transmission, but it's going up among those uh, age 15 to 19 years old. The outcomes uh, to be achieved, now back to our demonstration study, are three. Uh, to increase acceptability of PrEP among our study population, to demonstrate effective use of PrEP, and to generate evidence for use of PrEP and disseminate this evidence uh, for other countries. Our protocol is comprised of six components. Uh, one is the formative research where I will focus part of the presentation because that's where we are now. The second component uh, is to um, conduct strategies for recruitment, enrollment, and linkage to combination prevention um, developed by the project. The third component is one of combination prevent uh, strategies for adolescents at substantial risk of acquired HIV for those that do not opt uh, to take PrEP. The fourth component is evaluation of HIV self-test. The fifth is the, demos the, the actual demonstration study of PrEP effectiveness. The sixth the estimation of HIV incidence from prevalence data, and then the cost effectiveness study. Uh, this one is the only component that was not included in the main protocol that it's already approved by the ERC of WHO, and it, we have a conditional approval of our local IRB. So we will need um, still to design the cost effectiveness study. So we have different planned studies. I will start to describe it to you the main one, which is the demonstration study on PrEP that we enroll. Our goal is to enroll 2,360 men as men and transgender women in our age group in the three cities in Brazil. We will conduct studies to evaluate the other combination prevention studies, strategies. We conduct HIV self study Throughout our protocol, we'll conduct different qualitative studies along with the other, the six components. Uh, HIV serial incident study among HIV, uh, among individuals with criteria to use PrEP according to our protocol. And as I said to you, the economic and mathematical modeling study include the cost effectiveness, effectiveness study to inform the government decision and incorporate PrEP for this population. Here are the facilities where the demonstration uh, project will take place. Uh, we have different uh, uh, facilities in the three cities. I will start with Salvador, my hometown. So um, the protocol was developed by us at the Health Collective Institute in a partnership with the State of Bahia, meaning uh, the Department of Justice and Human Rights, and also uh, the Department, uh, Bahia Department of Health. And this partnership means that we will have the clinic at a house in the historical center of Salvador, it's a big house and we will have a whole floor where we already are um, arranging the clinic there. We are modifying the space uh, in one of the floors in order to uh, create all um, the space necessary to conduct the demonstration study. In Sao Paulo, it will be uh, carried out 
in different places. Uh, the prep service will take place at a, a, a very um, traditional um, anonymous testing site called Henfield uh, CTA. It's a municipal um, uh, service. And the testing and referral to PrEP will take place at an NGO called the Diversity Reference Center or, or Centro da Diversidade that already assists um, gay men and transgender people. And also from Casa Um, which is a uh, uh, house one in English, a LGBT center and house for men as men that have been expelled from home. So Casa Un has been, uh, also has um, experience with working uh, with HIV for many years. And in Belarus, so here, back to, uh, before going into Belarus, in Sao Paulo, there is a, a mix of um, diversity center and traditional, uh, service, health service from the city of Sao Paulo departments of health. And in Belo Horizonte, uh, it will take place um, mainly at facilities at the Federal University of Minas Gerais using um, a long experience of the Project Horizonte, which is a cohort, a men as men cohort established in 1994 and this cohort still going on. And this is, I would say, uh, the main base uh, for the demonstration project among adolescents. And from there, they're, they will partner with uh, the Reference Center for um, Infectious Disease at the Federal University of Minas Gerais and also a different um, public health centers throughout Belo Horizonte. So focus on component five, which is demonstrations, which is the demonstration study, um, where we are. We have a conditional approval of our protocol in Brazil. And I wanted to mention that, take a moment to mention that um, it's a very sensitive issue for IRBs especially, I would say, um, in Latin America, to work with adolescents. And we are in the process of answering all the comments and the suggestions given to the IRB from USP, and we hope to be uh, one of the final stages in approval for our protocol because there is issue with law and issues of, of uh, parental consenting that um, we are trying um, to really uh, protect the sexual identity of our participants because many of them uh, probably they don't want uh, to have a parental consent. So we are working around sensitive issues that uh, our RFB have asked us to incorporate in the project, especially regarding this one that I described of parental consent. The drugs are available in Brazil uh, through a strong partnership with the Brazilian Minister of Health and the IMPREP project. Uh, we took part of, of a recent visit of UNITAID to Fiocruz in Rio and then to um, the facilities at Sao Paulo in June of 2018. Uh, teams in the three cities are being hired and trained and formative research um, has started in the three cities. So here it's, um, you can see a photo of the recent um, UNITAID visit um, to Brazil. And the general inclusion criteria for the demonstration study uh, will be adolescents male, males uh, reporting unprotected sexual practice with another male in the past 12 months Adolescents who self-identify as transgender women in the age, both of these groups, the age range is uh, 15 years to 19 years old. They um, need to reside, to start or work um, in one of the cities and do not present any physical met mental impairment that prevents participation in the proposed activities. Participants in the baseline will be our study population and um, 
that uh, who meets the following eligibility criteria plus the general criteria that I just described. So uh, the eligibility criteria, the other ones are unprotected um, sexual intercourse in the last six months and or recruiting episodes of STI or repeated use of PEP, absence of HIV, absence of signs and symptoms of acute viral infection in the last 30 days preceding the entrance of the study visit, absence of renal impairment, and absence of osteopenia detected by clinical history. Um, you wanted to avoid any history of pathological uh, fracture. We are working also in the data management um, and we use um, our cyclone system, meaning that the cyclone system is a system already in place um, in Brazil through the National AIDS Program. It's been at the National AIDS Program uh, for quite a long time and started as a system uh, for management of drug dispensation throughout the country. And we, we use this system also for clinical management and drug dispensation uh, in the same uh, way or very similar to the, what the IMPREP project um, is doing. And we are in the phase of discussing with the developer of Cyclone how to best incorporate um, in the adolescent study. But this is important because um, Aciclone is um, a country uh, system. Um, it will be a very good setup in the future as we move um, to a public system. Um, and for those that will be at the age of 18, they already will have their data uh, to the PrepSUS uh, program in Brazil. PrepSUS, um, for those of you that are not familiar, is the PrEP uh, program at the Brazilian National Health System that has been in place since of January of this year. But uh, this, uh, the PrepSUS uh, program and policy is only for those of 18 um, and older and there are also criteria for uh, key populations to be um, in this um, program. So where uh, we are now? We are conducting formative research, as I mentioned before, in order to allow for the second component meaning the strategy for recruitment, enrollment, and link linkage to the combination prevention strategy in the project. So we are doing formative research with the goal to map and define facilitators, barriers, and acceptability of different recruitment strategies for PrEP and for other combination prevention. Because I mentioned that, then, and if you, if you remember, I, I described a component three, because if adolescent um, men as men or transgender women, at, when we approach them, are not ready uh, or don't want to use PrEP or be enrolled in PrEP, we don't want to lose them. So we'll be following, we, we will follow them through our arm of other combination prevention methods. So we are in this phase of mapping uh, where adolescents are in the three cities where the demonstration project will take place. So we are testing various demand creation strategy of community outreach to find adolescents and adjust the program and project to the needs identified. And we are testing um, demand creation strategies of communication at venues and social media. So here are um, the main design of our formative research. So we are mapping social space, meaning at schools, at health service, at parties, at different venues. And we are in the, this process of mapping 
And then as soon as we have final clears from our local RAB, we will start the um, in-depth interviews and focus groups. And this is the what we've been, it's been developed in our protocol, where we have eight um, in-depth interviews with key adolescents in Vermont per site, and we will have two focus group uh, per site as well. And I'll describe the formative research for Salvador. So this is our, our main communication uh, with the adolescent. We call um, our project in Salvador, Prepara Salvador. And this was very much discussed among um, young gay men and a few transgender women in order to decide that, um, the best name for uh, the project in Salvador. Because it's, even though it's three cities in Brazil, but our cities are very different. And we think it's very important that our communication strategy and logos are necessary to be um, context-based. This is our team, so, and it's very important to have in the teams when we work with young people, to have young people in the teams. Not only young people, but um, young gay men and young transgender uh, women, or trans men as well in this phase uh, of the study. So. Um, if we wanted to really communicate with adolescents, we need to have adolescents in the team. So some of um, our visual identity and communication, so you see here um, uh, one of our postcards that very much says about dance. So here it's um, talking to them about dance and in Salvador um, going to parties and dance are very much part of our culture. Um, this is our t-shirt, this is um, glasses that we wanted to distribute at the field. Um, and here is a postcard that we are using in the mapping um, research that we are doing, the map process that we are doing at different venues in Salvador. So. Here, when we go to different places, we take this postcard. This is the front part. This is the back part where we discuss, we hear, describe the project. And there is one space where we ask for name, Facebook, email, and then telephone, the cell phone, in order to keep um, their contact, in order for us to um, be able to reach them later on. Um, here is our page at Facebook, at Instagram, and we also create a small cards that very soon will have the address of the clinic so they will, we can distribute uh, more broadly and a card is better than a postcard because they can uh, put in their wallet and then keep as a way to remind them. Um, here, MEMS for communication, so uh, one of our young uh, guys in our team, he created this uh, prepuse uh, with images that very much uh, connect and communicate uh, with young people. So you see here different ones, and from time to time now we are uh, posting at our Instagram and Facebook. And um, for those of you uh, who don't um, know Portuguese, I'll give you some of the translation. So the PrEP one is the standard PrEP. It knows all about PrEP and safe sex. Uh, the Romeo one comes from the romance of Romeo uh, and Juliet because uh, this uh, young fellow in our team, he loves Shakespeare. And the prep, Romeo, prepping, Romeo represents the flirt, have many dates and encounters. Kiss me represents desire, loves to look at a sex body with tattoo on the back. Mary Jane is inspired 
it's bio Mary Jane from Spider-Man represents seduction and someone who sees me on a pretty face. So the prepions are mixed of minions and emoji from cell phones plus the prepio. Each of them represents an emotion, a personality, or a famous person. Here are some photos so you'll have an idea of the workshops we've been conducted public and private schools. And this being very popular. And actually the schools are being very open uh, to our proposals and protocols and the uh, young people, they really are eager to know uh, what we've been presented in the workshops. Um, this is us, let me see if I just, us in uh, the Visibility Trans Day and at the Gay Parade in, in Salvador. We went with our team, this is um, a lot of people from our team in the historical center of Salvador. This is the Casarão da Diversidade where we'll have the clinic. And we here also a photo of the Casarão and we use our postcards, our cards, in order to get um, in contact with uh, young people or with someone that have lots of contact with young people. Uh, we are doing actions in venues and parties. So we take our a banner and we have a table, we have with condoms and, infer and gel and information about um, our study. More photos. Uh, uh, here in different parties um, and, and outside in the streets and squares we call Praças and Lagos where we go um, um, to talk to young people where uh, they gather, especially young gay men and young uh, transgender women. Here it's a photo of the Casarão at the da Diversidade. We have this very nice butterfly. Here is uh, our, our the very nice colleague uh, from Ufiba, an architect that is working with us in order to uh, remodel the place and build the clinic at the Casarão. Here is Marco Benedetti that worked with Imprep. He visited us um, about a month ago in one of um, our this is Luisa from our uh, formative research team. Uh, very quick, I move to uh, the stage of formative research of Belo Horizonte. So this is the logo of Belo Horizonte. So you see it's a little bit different from what we are doing in Salvador. Um, this is the team, also mm, different people with different background uh, working with the PI, Gisele Greco. And they are in the preparatory activities, meeting with institutions and, and professionals that work with young people, meeting with Kid Informant, um, and here photos of their different meetings with institution and Kid Informants. In Sao Paulo, so I'll show you the research of Sao Paulo. They already also uh, map NGOs that will collaborate with uh, the project. And you see here photos of the Casa Un um, that I describe it as a center for culture and hosting of LGBT population, especially young people expelled uh, from the family. And the partnership agreement has already um, started. They also are mapping health service and institution for men as men, health service for transgender women, social welfare service uh, for individuals um, under 18 years um, of age. Um, they map an LGBT related NGO uh, who works with the Sao Paulo Department of Human Rights, another LGBT um, related NGO with a background in community HIV intervention in the downtown area because most of the work in Sao Paulo, given the um, Sao Paulo, it's a very, very populated city. So they will focus most of their activities for the PrEP protocol in the downtown area of Sao Paulo. Um, we presented our protocol um, at the 
latest age 218 at Amsterdam. So we were part of a satellite that was organized by WHO in, on PrEP among adolescents. Uh, here we are with the IMPREP project at the Brazilian Minister of Health System at the conference. We took place at a youth event at the Global Village with colleagues from uh, South Africa uh, to discuss um, with young people um, about PrEP. And to finalize, uh, just to give you an idea, um, after we conducted our, after we finalized our formative research, this is our idea for the second component, uh, the strategy for recruitment and enrollment and the effectiveness indicators from this component too. So we will have, we are learning from the formative research in order to move to component two and started the uh, enrollment um, strategy. So we have peer interventions, counseling and tests at social space, counseling and tests at NGO, enrollment via intervention on social media, enrollment via health service schools, and also contact with uh, PrEP users uh, from the PrEP um, SUS program. Here is a, a column of the study population. I can come back to this um, again, but this is the indicator that we will have in this um, component two. And this is um, the effectiveness parameter for each of this enrollment um, strategy and the indicator that uh, we are using um, in each one of this uh, intervention so that we will um, collect the percent of, of unprotective uh, anosex and then the percentage of HIV that we expected to see in the different um, uh, enrollment here and then the effectiveness uh, parameter that um, we will have in the, in the end. Um, so I wanted to acknowledge uh, the teams at the different um, sites. Thank you. And this is uh, my mail and I'm more than glad to uh, answer questions, be available for questions, not only now, but um, later on. Thanks so much, Ines. It's been a very interesting presentation. Um, I had a few questions. Of course, the floor is open. Uh, I don't know. Is Alejandra there? Alejandra Trocero? No, I would, I mean, if she's there. Yes, I am. Thank you. Oh, Alejandra, would you like to make a comment, please? Thank you, Carlos. Uh, and thank you, Ines. A very, very interesting, um, very interesting and very exciting opportunity to look at PrEP. Um, for adolescents. Um, I think it's, it's, for me, it's, it's interesting to see um, how you are, in a way, shaping services um, to ensure that adolescents sort of create demand. Um, one of the biggest questions uh, um, that I have, in particular in terms of creating demand, is whether adolescents will go to a health center, considering that the health-seeking behaviors um, is not, is not um, geared towards accessing um, services in health facilities. So it's good to see that you are going to test different models in a way, because in Sao Paulo and in other places in Salvador, you're going to look at um, venues outside the traditional health centers, while in Belo Horizonte, if I understood correctly, um, they will be in also in a health facility. So I think this is an important uh, piece of information, because it's not only going to inform um, PrEP and, and but also in terms of delivering health services in general for adolescents and, and particularly for adolescents from uh, key populations. So I think there are many um, interesting opportunities and see how um, the flow of um, intake of services or uptake of services change over time, what sort of um, uh, decisions adolescents made in relation to accessing uh, a preventive service or a preventive method. Um, I have two questions for you. Um, the first one relates to um, the current political situ situation in Brazil, the new 
uh, changes and whether you see that may affect um, the way in which services will be delivered and whether it's affect um, uh, or how it could affect this um, project. Hopefully it won't affect, but I wonder whether you have, a, have done any analysis in terms of, of risk and, and risk mitiga mitigations. Um, and the second question is around um, all the communications materials that you've done and whether you have tested with adolescents and what was their, um, how was their, their update, how, 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 what was their, their reaction? And whether you see that using more um, uh, WhatsApp or, you know, sort of a digital outreach will improve the way in which adolescents make decisions around accesses or not. So thank you again and, uh, and thank you, Carol, for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much, Alejandra, for uh, your comments and questions, very important ones. Yes, we, would, uh, we wanted to test different models, you are absolutely right, and um, we know uh, the difficulties of adolescents to come to the um, health service. Uh, they only come when um, they are sick and they have signs and symptoms of something. Uh, other than that, um, they usually don't come. So that's why uh, it's a challenge actually for us. It's been a challenge because they're all the regulator, um, um, the regulator um, guidelines that we need to commit. But we, uh, fortunately, we have uh, moved beyond that, and we have all the all the approval from our local we call vis uh, sanitary vigilance in order to have our clinic um, um, at, in a place outside uh, the, the traditional health system. So this is going well and I'm very pleased, but it's taking, taking some times and challenges. So uh, we'll see and we'll be able uh, to inform that. Uh, moving to your question, um, yes, the political situation is something that we, from now on, will have to uh, worry because we don't know what's going to happen. Um, we will carry on with all of our activities. We need to be um, careful, uh, very careful, but I think um, in the three cities that uh, we are working, we have developed a good connection with the judici judiciary system and if anything happens, uh, we will ask them to help us. But it is a very delicate time for Brazil because, um, as I said to you, um, it will be a very unsure time, especially for LGBT population. So there will be more to, to come on this point because um, I don't know. Uh, uh, what will happen. But we are here and we will continue to do everything we have been prepared um, to do it in our protocol. And the second one about the communication materials, this has been uh, very, very interesting. And as I said, in order to do and to develop the, a good demand creation in terms of, of communication for young people, we need to work with young people. Um, they are the ones to tell us the language, the best material to help us to decide what is best for them. And so far, what we learn is that, actually I thought that WhatsApp would be something um, that easy to communicate with them, but they have, they have been teaching us that Instagram is where they use the most. Uh, and set, being, setting, uh, being, saying that we are now working with a, a group in Sao Paulo to see if it would be interesting to use artificial intelligence for some of the components of our study, uh, meaning the, the second component and the component after uh, they enroll in PrEP 
or in the other communicate in other combination prevention strategy our communication with them would be using artificial intelligence so we are learning that uh, right now we had a meeting in sao paulo uh, last week um, where um, the, this group presented to us the potentials and possibility of this technology wow wow how oh, interesting <laughs> Perhaps to say, perhaps to say that an artificial intelligence um, UNICEF in Brazil have done this project to Caretas, um, and I know that they were looking at using a similar strategy for HIV prevention. So I also encourage you to contact our uh, communication team in, in UNICEF because they they've been running for about ten months now. Um, uh, an artificial intelligence um, model um, project on sexing for um, for young girls, for adolescent girls. Excellent. So. Right. Anyway, thank you. Um, there's another question, and I also have questions, but I will actually uh, uh, talk about uh, Elizabeth Gardner's questions for, question first. Uh, her question is about is. Uh, what is your expectation on how long each person will stay on PrEP? Uh, is there a plan for cycling on and off PrEP? Well, people, so, um, do we have an well, answer? Yes. Oh, so, well, our project, our cohort um, will be for two years. Um, we we know from other not not many studies uh, have been done among adolescents but a data from the group from chicago um the data um actually tell us told us that 30 percent of adolescents after six months drop uh prep but uh, this study was conducted in the united states um where prep uh, it's not available for free but even though was um in a research scheme um adolescents um tend to drop um the use of prep um much more uh, much more earlier than adults so adherence to prep among adolescents it, it is an issue um, that's why we, through formative research, also in our um, in-depth interview and focus groups, that's one of the points that it's part of our script, interview script, is to really discuss and focus. There is a whole section that focuses on adherence because it is a key issue, especially among adolescents. So we will do um, the most of what we can um, for adolescents to be on our cohort, um, the maximum uh, as we can reach in during the two years of follow-up. Okay, thank you, Ines. Um, if people will have any other question or comment, they can use the chat window. Anyway, I had a few, uh, in fact, and uh, definitely the first one is, uh, yeah, we were, discussing with Ines before we started the webinar on the political results but it's my my feeling that uh, um, I mean many things are changing around the world and uh, we still don't know what all this means and uh, it seems like many things are changing radically not necessarily for the worse it can be for the better so uh, because I mean there's so much corruption and so many schemes that were uh, sort of unseen before, and and uh, now they are becoming to be evi uh, uh, becoming evident. So, I think uh, we just have to see. And in this case, uh, we're talking about health and about something that is uh, useful, important. So, I mean, it, it, it's up to the people to explain and defend what is positive and and good. And we have to just uh, see what happens. So, I I am optimistic about this and. Uh, no, I think that's the way to, to be. We, we, we shouldn't be pessimistic because things get worse. We, uh, so uh, from that level, uh, many things have changed in Brazil over the past 20 years. Even, I mean, uh, conservative waves have, are not new, but still many of the, of the positive changes remained. So I think um, that is uh, 
something that may uh, I mean, that should be considered. Anyway, uh, something else is um, that I wanted to ask. Uh, you know, adherence is not. I mean, when people start prep, you know, definitely uh, at any time prep is contingent upon upon need, and uh, need is expressed in terms of high sexual risk. So if people stop having uh, being at high sexual risk, they may not apply. They they I mean, prep may not be appropriate for them. So I mean, in many event whenever uh, people uh, get uh, on and off prep we should always uh, uh, you know ask ourselves if that is a result of a lower risk and people just uh, may realize that uh, they are not having sex so why they should be using prep at that point so i mean uh, that happens with adults and uh, we should try to to assess if that's happening with young people but otherwise i mean we we will treat um, PrEP as a as treatment and PrEP is not treatment. No, PrEP is prophylaxis. Prophylaxis is always contingent upon need. It's, a, it's a one thing that I wanted to ask. The other thing, um, the second thing is the, about um, um, or no, maybe maybe go ahead with, with, with that. I don't know what you have to, to say in it, not to overwhelm you. Yeah, I I think you have a good point, um, Carlos, regarding adherence and the strong focus on adherence as it as if it's a treatment. You are, I think, I uh, very much agree with you. And with adolescents, I think your point is even more important that um, they may transition from on and off, um, um, you know, in a rapid. Um, uh, phase or in a rapid way uh, compared to adults and also that's why we wanted to have this other arm of combination prevention because at the, at the moment that we enroll uh, someone a participant and they're not and he or she um, not ready for prep but maybe in two months or three months, depending of their, you know, sex life, um, they decided to move from one arm to the other. So we would, we don't want to lose uh, young people who reach us or young people that we reach during our recruitment um, strategies because this movement uh, from one group to the other, it can be very dynamic. So that's something that uh, we will um, be exploring and evaluating throughout um, our follow-up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And uh, what is the legal framework for access to health services among young people or adolescents, minors in Brazil? You, you mean in general? I mean, the legal framework concerning access to, to health services. Uh, yes. Well, um, it's interesting, uh, Carlos, because we've been actually discussing, as I said, with uh, uh, we call Ministerio Público, um, part of the judiciary system, because if if a young guy of eighteen of fifteen years old uh, wants to have an HIV test, he's entitled to without parental consent. But what happened is that professionals at the health system, um, they tend not uh, to provide the service. They want adolescents to be uh, uh, together with um, one of the parents or a responsible person. So even though they do have the right, it's in our, um, some of our documents in the, uh, the legal uh, system in Brazil, but um, usually professionals from the, um, the public health system um, don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's happening in many, in many places. Now, um, uh, are you getting, uh, or I mean, you haven't started yet, but um, do you foresee any problem with trans women, transgender women? Because that's a problem in, among adults. L less people, there are more difficulties uh, in general. So, what do you think? 
Yeah, I think, uh, Carlos, um, and, and the whole group that are here together, is that this whole issue of clearance from uh, IRB is something that also would be a result of our study. Actually, we, we, are, we are collecting this experience and documents because this is actually something new. Um, IRB uh, committees are very, um, um, I would say, are very resistant to release uh, protocols, complete protocols, when the issue is among adolescents, especially uh, regarding uh, parental consent and assentment form or consent form. And so this is a part of our study that it's a learning experience, actually. And now what USP, um, the IRB from USP has, has asked us is that if our argument of not having a parental consent, um, and we, we made a strong argument, and as I said, for transgender women, even more important, now they want us uh, that the judiciary system will have a word to say if the assentment form is not there. So we are working around that now, and actually we are finalized to send all the documents to the IRB of, of USP, and we will send to our National Eth Ethics Committee in Brasilia. So that's the movement now. Um, and yeah. Actually, uh, have you received uh, approval from WHO, from the Ethics Committee at WHO already, or not yet? Um, WHO, actually, in WHO, our navigation was actually um, much easier than here, I have to say. But the final clearance from WHO uh, is conditional on, on the local uh, country approval. So we have mm -hmm. everything from WHO, but the final document, it's conditional on the Brazil document, final okay. approval. And the, the start date for the project is actually uh, is also contingent upon approval, or is it's already running? What 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 we have decided to do, Carlos, and this is an important point, also maybe for other countries, is that uh, some the, our cities and uh, decided the three sites decided, and São Paulo has done that actually ahead of time to send uh, only the formative research to our local institution, RRB. So at ISCI, at the Health Collective Institute, where I'm based, um, our just the formative research part is under review, and I should hear from them in the end of this month. And we decided to do that in order um, um, to allow us to advance and finalize the, the component one. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, one way that we decided to do it, uh, to allow us to go for uh, the interviews, uh, the in-depth interviews and the focus group. All the other communication part that doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't need permission and consent form to be signed from the adolescent part, we, we have done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, in our case, we uh, we uh, the, the Imper project started, but I mean, the approvals took a bit longer than expected. So, I mean, it sort of uh, took time out of our follow up. So, uh, for the demonstration study, so that was our concern. But maybe it's not the case uh, of you guys, and uh, you will be luckier in that sense. So, anyway, <laughs> but we are already uh, over the the hour, and uh, I mean, it's been. A very interesting webinar you know we have recorded it and it's going to be uploaded in our YouTube channel and our website and uh, uh, so if, in, it's going to be available for others to uh, look at it later and uh, I mean it's been uh, I've been delighted to to have you here today uh, Ines it's been a 
a very interesting webinar and I, I think people have enjoyed it very much. So thank you for your uh, willingness to participate. Uh, we'll have a, a Spanish, uh, actually Portuguese, Portuñol version of this webinar about the 22nd of, um, of November. I think we're planning because Ines is going to travel and she can't do it right, right away now. But we'll have a second take of this in, I mean, for the, the region in Portuguese or Portuñol. So uh, again, thank you very much, Ines. Thank you so much, Carlos. Uh, my pleasure. Okay. Well, so great. We'll keep in touch then. Thank you all for uh, participating here today. Bye. Bye-bye.